So you're interested in CRNA school or you're interested in seeing what CRNA school is like as of December 2022. And I'm here to give you a recap of CRNA school semester two out of nine. I'm two semesters into my nine semester program. We'll dive into it. First things first, what classes did I take this semester? How did they go? What technology did I use? And what was the outcome at the end of it? I took 15 credit hours this semester. It was epidemiology, a health policy class, an ethics class, and a evidence-based practice class, all of which together was 15 credit hours. I'm gonna show up here or over here on screen how that ended up. I ended up with all A's, which I do not have to get to get through CRNA school. I just have to maintain greater than 83% average to maintain my status in the program. But I am happy to see another semester of straight A's because why not? And then I want to talk about kind of what technology I used and then some of the involvements, particularly for epidemiology and what was involved there. Epidemiology was taught by our public health department and this was a continuation of last semester where the public health department taught us biostatistics, which is great. He was one of my favorite professors ever. I think he's awesome. If he happens to be watching this, thank you so much. You're the best. I owe you five guys. <laughs> but epidemiology was a continuation of biostatistics, so we did use Excel to be able to graph all of our practice problems. It was really interesting because it was based off of real issues within the community and real issues at the state level. So you are given like XYZ disease pattern, it has an R naught of whatever R naught, which I'll pop up here, that means how quickly the disease spreads from person to person and the rate of multiplication. So each case would produce in the community how many other cases. So we would use Excel to go through all of that, which Excel is something I didn't really use in undergrad. I used it once in a statistics class, but it wasn't something that I used a lot. So first semester, there was a little bit of getting used to looking things up on YouTube for how to use Excel, just like basic Excel functions. But it was just a continuation and building off of biostatistics. So we did everything in Excel. And I thought it was really interesting because there was the real world application piece to it. It wasn't just, hey, here's a bunch of practice problems, go for it. It was, hey, this would be the R naught of like COVID, for example, how quickly is it gonna spread in this community? And then what are you as the public health worker going to do about it? Or in this case, the CRNA. So that, I thought that was really interesting. I really enjoyed epidemiology. And then as far as my other classes, I had a doctorally prepared nurse teach the health policy class and I really enjoy health policy. So I thought that was really, really interesting. I got to write about some of my favorite pieces of policy, which are the nurse to patient ratios, laws that were passed in California by the nursing unions. And then I got to talk about a lot about nurse patient ratios. We talked a lot about maternal and or paternal and child mortality in different states. We talked a lot about reproductive health. So it was really interesting as a semester to just kind of dig into the state level policy because state policy varies so widely from state to state. All that being said, I really enjoy health policy. I enjoy ethics. I enjoy epidemiology, but we have not gotten into our core anesthesia classes yet. Speaking of our anesthesia core classes that are going to start in January in my program. You can check out this video here where I talk about CRNA school semester one recap. And that's where I talk about the program structure of CRNA schools and how they have changed. All CRNA schools now are doctorate programs and many have opted to have six months at the beginning that are very health policy and like biostatistics based where students can still work a little bit during those first two semesters, which is this video. Can you work during CRNA school? You can check both of those videos out in addition to this video where I talk about why I'm working in the PACU right now. All of that being said, in about three weeks or two and a half weeks, I'm jumping into my full-time didactic courses, which I'm very excited about. And now I wanna talk about some of the things I wish that I had done differently or that I would tell myself to do differently in retrospect. Here's a couple of things I would have done differently if I was starting CRNA school all over again. The first thing I would have done a little bit differently is I would have asked more questions of my CRNA school mentor. I, I'm lucky I have a faculty mentor and an SRNA mentor. I would have asked a couple of more questions about program structure. Um, in my program, we're the first doctorate cohort. My mentor couldn't really speak too much to the workload because we're the first group to go through it. But 
I would say for people who are starting at my particular school, which I'm not really disclosing online very broadly, but I would say that you actually could work full time throughout the first two semesters of this particular program. Now, not in the rest of the program, but just for those first uh, two semesters, I think you could work full time. So I would have liked to have known that going in. However, for me, it really worked out because I've been building Confident Care Academy, working more than 30 hours a week on Confident Care Academy, which is me and Chrissy CRNA partnering together to bring all of these critical care lectures to nurses. Also, travel nursing education, CRNA school admission education, financial advice, all of that stuff. We've worked really hard the last six months building Confident Care Academy, so I wouldn't have it any other way but I would just recommend to people going into the program to ask a lot of questions about workload and program structure just so that you're gonna be able to set yourself up for success. And go, please subscribe to our YouTube slash podcast uh, channel over here. That's confidentcareacademy.com. And then before I get into reflections on my second semester of CRNA school, I wanted to talk about something I'm really grateful for. I'm really grateful that I did not wait like five to seven years before going back to CRNA school. I really think for me that sweet spot was applying at two years, interview and starting grad school right at the three-year mark because it's been easy for me to jump back into school. Of course, next semester is going to be much harder, but even just the workflow of writing papers, submitting assignments, keeping up with due dates and all of that, it didn't really feel very foreign to me because it had only been like, you know, three years since I had been in school and been a student myself. So I really am grateful for the timeline. I think that there's no right path to getting into CRNA school. I think that everybody is where they're supposed to be at the time. However, I would recommend to other people to kind of hit that two years of experience and then apply and then you start school about a whole year later. You can check out my CRNA school interview tips here where we talk about admissions, questions, FAQs, and then like the school searching and all of that stuff. That is this video here as well. But for me, this timeline has been perfect. And I'm really glad that I had not applied to CRNA school at only one year of experience because I would not have had even all of the communication tips that I needed to start to prepare me for CRNA school. When you only work on one unit and then you apply to CRNA school, you don't know what it's like to work with different team environments with other team members and different specialties and I'm just really glad that I had that year as a travel nurse as a buffer before or two years as a travel nurse before I started CRNA school because I think I really learned a lot about advocating for my patients working with multidisciplinary teams working in the neuro ICU the MICU COVID ICU and not just CV ICU and I think that made me a much stronger clinician before starting the program so I'm really happy with my timeline I'm glad that I applied at two years I'm glad that I started at three years and I'm really happy I'm happy to be where I am today. And I'm also very grateful to be where I am today. I'm having fun. And then a reflection piece that I've learned that I think is going to apply a lot more next semester is that the one class that we had with our anesthesia faculty member, he wasn't teaching the class. It was, hey, this is your assigned reading, read the textbook, and then we're gonna do assignments about it. Which I think is going to be the model that the rest of CRNA school is. I hear that lectures are more to guide your learning and you are not gonna be able to just study straight off the slides and then like get an A on the test. You have to pre-read, you have to actually read the textbooks, read a couple of different textbooks, and then use the slides to kind of guide your learning. I think that that this is kind of very much a precursor, like a preview <laughs> of what's going to happen in all of the rest of our didactic semesters. Because the only class that was taught by a CRNA, there was no slides at all. It was just, hey, here's your assigned lectures, and then do the assignment. I feel very fortunate because I, the way that my education was structured, it was not typical. But I was homeschooled K through 12 and we did a lot of like self-teaching. And I think that that hopefully that kind of style of like, hey, here's the assignment, read it through and then come and then discuss it in class, I think is going to be hopefully beneficial heading into the core didactic classes at CRNA school. And this is just something I wanted to pass along to people who are about to start or they're looking to start in 2023. They're looking at the first two semesters of didactic and kind of wondering what to expect. The little sneak peek that I have so far is that it is not like nursing school because because you have to do self-teaching and then self-reading in addition to what is taught in class. Like you're not spoon-fed everything. It's at like that doctoral level where you are given resources and then you have to go figure it out for yourself. So I'm excited to see what's, what's to come next semester. A couple of things that I'm going to work on is that I'm going to take the Skillshare class that will be linked up here. 
on Anki. I'm gonna learn how to set up Anki cards and then Chrissy CRNA, so you should come check out our podcast and YouTube channel here. She has recommended reading Morgan and Mikhail before class and then Longnecker before class and then using the slides to guide my additional learning. I'm going to trial that as I get into my anesthesia classes. Next semester, I'm taking anatomy, physiology, <laughs> chemistry and physics or chemistry slash physics and health policy classes. 15 classes, it's gonna be pretty heavy. And I am hoping that some of the study techniques that I utilized in nursing school, you can see this study techniques video I made here. I'm gonna be brushing up on those. I'm going to be working on more time-saving measures and I'm going to be, we're really just trying to dial in on like how to be as efficient as possible entering into CRNA school, the core didactic pieces of CRNA school. One last thing I would have done differently if I was talking to myself a year ago is I would have saved more money before starting CRNA school. I get about $27,000 a year that I could borrow in cost of living expense loans just to cover my rent and food and all of that. $27,000 a year in 2022, almost 2023, it's not really enough to cover like rent and health insurance and like car insurance and all of this stuff. So if I could go back, I would have saved more money. I did save some, but we also had a couple of other financial things going on at the time. So I would have saved a little bit more money. I can make a whole video about uh, like money. And I think that'll be a podcast episode with Chrissy over on the Competent Care Academy page. So you should go check that out. But that's one thing I would say, I, I would change. I would say, to my former self or to anybody who just got into CRNA school or is looking to finish up their application season is like, as soon as you get in, you need to be a travel nurse and then you need to at least work a local travel job. You can check out this video about local travel nursing if you don't wanna leave your area, but you want to make like three times as much money. So check out this one. And then the there's also another video, the 50 mile rule doesn't exist. Check out that video as well. So yeah, I would have saved a little bit more money going into it, but I do have cost of living loans and I do, I am still working part-time as of right now. Now. and I'm gonna get through it'll be good but I just want to let you know that the cost of living loans that you're taking out are not like they're not gonna give you sixty thousand dollars to live on it's like twenty seven thousand that they'll give you to live on but I think that's it for the recap of semester two got all A's I'm excited we're heading into semester three and then I'll already be done with my first year of CRNA school which is crazy like time is flying and I'm so enjoying the process please comment what would you like me to talk about next time I am thinking about this channel becoming more behind the scenes of CRNA school like what it looks like in class what I'm doing in the lab um, just my day in the life like study habits so comment what you would like me to talk about and go definitely check out the Confident Care Academy podcast where we're doing all sorts of critical care and anesthesia education thanks bye